Hello, Dr. Joe here. Now, how have you got high blood pressure? Well, I've got a short video for you here. Even if you don't have high blood pressure, I still will encourage you to watch the video because here's something you should know. There are some supplements that you use that may hurt your blood pressure. And that is what today's video is about. So what I have done in this very video is select three of such supplements. Now, there is a longer list of these very supplements in my book, my book on managing high blood pressure with lifestyle approach. You're going to get a link to this very book right below this very video if you haven't picked up a copy yet. So we're going to be talking about three of such supplements and uh, just have a little dive in as to how they may be affecting your blood pressure negatively. Let's have a quick look in. So these are the three supplements to avoid if you've got high blood pressure. Let's have a quick run through of these uh, very supplements. So supplement number one is licorice root and licorice candy. Now, if you are using the licorice root or consuming the licorice candy uh, over a long time, you will be asking for trouble. This will apply to you. And also, if you're having a high intake of licorice candy, which, you know, in fairness, can be quite tasty, uh, well, you will be asking for trouble for that uh, level of sweetness that you're getting. So, what's the issue here? Well, it is that licorice has an active ingredient that is called glycyrrhizine. And the glycyrrhizine behaves like the hormone we call aldosterone, okay? It behaves like aldosterone. And what does it do? Well, it makes you to lose a lot of potassium, whilst at the same time making you retain lots of sodium. That is a problem. The combination of low potassium and sodium retention is not good for your blood pressure. It's just going to hurt your blood pressure. Uh, in the short, medium, and long term. So, best avoided. Now, just to make matters even more complicated, if you're somebody who is on these medications, captopril, ramipril, enalapril, lisinopril, perindopril, all these medications that fall into the class of ACE inhibitors, that's what we call them, they are ACE inhibitors, uh, they are best avoided because licorice interacts with these medications and uh, that's going to make your blood pressure control even more difficult for you. So there are quite a number of reasons why uh, you must stay off licorice if you've got high blood pressure. So let's move on so, to supplement number two and that is guarana. Okay, guarana. And it comes as tinctures, powders, capsules, and energy drinks, very popular. The energy drinks are quite popular, uh, especially amongst the younger folks. So, uh, what is the problem with guarana and blood pressure control? Well, it is that guarana bean has four times the caffeine content that you will find in a coffee bean, gram for gram. Okay, uh, guarana has more caffeine, and it's four times the amount compared to the caffeine you have in coffee beans. So there lies the problem because you will inadvertently end up consuming high doses of caffeine when you consume guarana in any format. Okay, the tinctures, the powders, the capsules, and the energy drink like you have here, uh, the, the capsule there too. So uh, best avoid it because uh, you will be hurting your blood pressure. So that is supplement number two. Let's move on to supplement number three. And that is Panas Ginseng. Now, I will refer you to this very publication here that was published in the Journal of Ginseng Research with the title, Cardiovascular Diseases and Panas Ginseng, a Review on Molecular Mechanisms and Medical Applications. Now, this review, going through it, you'll get a mixed message, okay? So it's a... It's a bit of a mixed bag regarding the effect of Panas Ginseng on your blood pressure because it tells me that uh, if your blood pressure is low and you use Panas Ginseng, 
it raises your blood pressure, okay? So if your blood pressure is low, it's going to raise it. In the meantime, if your blood pressure is high, it seems to be suggesting that it may lower your blood pressure. So this becomes really uh, a mixed message that can be very confusing. So what do you do in a situation like this? Here is what I advise. If you are using Panas Ginseng and your blood pressure is being stubborn to control, well, dump the Panas Ginseng. Okay, dump it uh, if your blood pressure is stubborn. So that would be my approach regarding this situation where we have a mixed message regarding the effect of Panas Ginseng on your cardiovascular health, in particular, your blood pressure more specifically. So personally, I would say avoid it. Okay, so supplements can be a great addition to our lifestyle. They can help to improve our health. There is no doubt about that. But just like B pharma medications, supplements can come with side effects. And that is the reason I do videos like this, to alert you to the possibility that a particular supplement that you're using may be responsible for whatever problem you may be having because they can help and they can also hurt. So I want you to always look over your shoulders to see whether any supplement that you're using may be responsible for a problem you're having. That way you can dump such a supplement, okay? Or look for alternatives. So I want to know from you guys if you have used any supplement that has produced some kind of detrimental side effects you know to your health do let me know in the comment section and i'm hoping that you got some value from this very video if you did please give the video a thumbs up please like the video and also please share this video with your friends with your family with your colleagues if you've got any questions any comments regarding the content of this video presentation go ahead leave your comments or questions down below i think that's about it for this very video until next time where well, this is dr joe signing